Okay, got a lot going on today. Boy, I had to rebuild the computer here somewhat. Not that dramatic, but yeah, it was not working. So I had to uh, had to do some stuff. And then I thought I'd refresh our little uh, our channel introductory video. So that's all new. I'll be putting that up today. And uh, we're going to continue with the selection of the right time. Selecting the right time with a uh, chapter or a section called Grandmaster Dengyo in the Age of the Semblance Dharma. So this would be early uh, uh, Buddhism establishing Tendai concepts and a Mahayana uh, platform or ordination platform, which I've read accounts was not f succeeded in Dengyo's lifetime, Saicho's lifetime, but later was commemorated in his name as Dengyo. Um, so I don't know that we're going to solve that mystery in this, but that's not the important fact. The important fact here is Nichiren discussing the way uh, Nichiren, or um, Buddhism and the Lotus Sutra specifically was uh, bandied about depending on whose opinion was gaining favor from those in control, the elites, the government, and so forth. And now, um, and this is pre-Shogunate, I believe, or, or just before, around that time. So here we go. It starts with a question, and it's a long question, so bear with me. But you know, Nietzsche is the one writing these questions. So even though it's a question and answer format, understand that this is Nietzsche sort of playing the devil's advocate, not to use incorrect terminology, but... In other words, he's setting up an argument, but he's setting it up with a lot of scholarship. He's actually teaching Buddhism as he's asking a question so that he can then swoop in with an answer that provides insight into all those questions. It's a brilliant device for teaching. You have a tendency when you read something that says question to think of it as your own thoughts. Um, <laughs> so... It kind of draws you into the question, doesn't it? Here we go. Grandmaster Dengyo is Japanese. Well, he wasn't at the time. He's deceased. But yeah, Japanese. Living during the reign of Emperor Kamu, he refuted the false teachings of the six schools of Nara, which had spread during more than 200 years since the reign of Emperor Kimei, and propagated the perfect wisdom and meditation established by Grandmaster Tendai. So there it is, the Tendai uh, school. He also refuted the three Hinayana precept uh, deuses or platforms established in Japan, in Japan by Master Chen Chan, or Chan, and established on Mount Hiei the perfect and sudden precept deus for the specific granting of the Mahayana precepts. Now that's the t the thing I was telling you whether it happened in his lifetime or not um, is attributed to him because that was his effort, but it may have actually occurred uh, by one of his senior disciples and commemorated or memorialized by Dengyo because that was his whole effort. It was a wondrous event that happened 1800 years after the death of the Buddha, not only in India, China, and Japan, but also throughout the entire world. In other words, Every Buddhist understood the significance of this moment, the, of the ordination platform of Mahayana precepts for the first time since Shakyamuni's passing. A significant moment, yeah? 
Dengyo's inner understanding of Buddhism may or may not have been equal to Nagarjuna and Tendai. Nevertheless, he seems superior to Nagarjuna and Vasubandhu, or Nanue and Tendai, in that he was able to bring about a unity to the Buddhist world by means of the perfect precept. Generally, and this is still the question, generally speaking, only these two, Tendai and Dengyo, were practicers of the Lotus Sutra in the 1800 years after the death of the Buddha. Remember, we've had this line of questioning, well, if it's the supreme teaching, then why wasn't it taught from the get-go? Right? So here's another version of that. Tendai and Dengyo were obviously practitioners of the Lotus Sutra, and yet it wasn't widely circulated as the primary teaching. Grandmaster Dengyo therefore cites in his Outstanding Principles of the Lotus Sutra, the words of the Lotus Sutra, chapter 11, on, quote, the appearance of the stupa of treasures, right, the treasure tower, the jeweled stupa, by any other name, which states that lifting up Mount Sumeru and throwing it to numerous Buddha lands is not as difficult as spreading the Lotus Sutra in the latter age of degeneration after the death of Shakyamuni Buddha. Now, the translation here says the death of the Buddha, but I'm so sick of that faux translation. It's specifically Shakyamuni Buddha that they're talking about. Buddha didn't expire. Buddha's an eternal state of knowing. And it's a state of knowing that exists only in the mind. But what it knows is a state that pervades all time and space. Time without beginning, time without end, all of that. But Buddha, specifically, that word is about you getting it. Your mind observing the, the functions of all phenomena in the universe, including the way your guitar is out of tune, as this function of energy, information, and disassembly. This flow of energies manifesting and dissolving constantly. That, that Buddha-ness is the perception and the experience of that perception in this samsaric mind. A mind that only exists as it emerges from this structure, this apparatus, I call it. Body, bodies, consciousnesses, all of this just to instantiate a mind that perceives and understands or doesn't, Right? Buddha being the absolute clarity. That is Buddha, in case you were wondering. So when they say the death of Buddha, they're, re they're referring to a man. Buddha doesn't die. A human does. Right? Interpreting this, he then declares, quote, Shakyamuni Buddha, see, said that it is easy to uphold the sutras, which are shallow in meaning, but it is difficult to uphold those sutras profound in meaning. Yeah, not so easy when you use that lens on everything, including your own experience. It's easy to follow the steps of, uh, uh, you know, judo, for instance. You just repeat. But to really challenge the, the meat of what you're made of, it, it can be... It can be easy, and it can be very difficult even to perceive, right? It's hard to see ourselves sometimes. Therefore, it is natural for men of valor to believe in the Lotus Sutra, which is profound in meaning, just as Grandmaster Tendai, I call this my page-turning karma, <laughs> following the wishes of Shakyamuni, spread the Lotus School in China in the past, and today we, on Mount Hiei, following the teaching of Tendai, are propagating the Lotus School in Japan. Still in the question. The meaning of this interpretation is that, suppose there were a short man, five feet tall, living in between the ninth small kalpa within the kalpa of continuance, when the human lifespan was a hundred years and decreasing, 
and the last 50 years of Shakyamuni Buddha's life in 1800 years after his death. Even if such a man can throw a gold mountain, 168,000 Yohana, or 6,620,000 Ri in height, over the surrounding iron mountains, as though it were one or two inch piece of tile thrown a few hundred yards, at a speed faster than a sparrow, it would be more difficult to expand the Lotus Sutra in the latter age of degeneration the way the Buddha did during his lifetime. Only Grand Master Tendai and Dengyo spread it in a way similar to that of the Buddha. So it's an interesting analogy on the strength of character, really. Commentators in India had not gone to preach the true meaning of the Lotus Sutra. In China, Buddhist masters before Tendai had gone either too far or too short. Those after him, such as Tsuen, Fatsang, and Subhakara Shima, blundered, calling the East the West, or the Heaven the Earth. Those words and the outstanding principles of the Lotus Sutra are not those of self-conceit on the part of Grand Master Dengyo. On the 19th day of the first month in the 21st year of the Enraku era, 802 AD, Emperor Kamu traveled to the Takozan Temple, where he ordered a dozen or so high priests of the six schools and seven great temples in Nara, such as Zenji, Shoyu, Hoki, Chonin, Gengokyoku, Ampuku, Gonso, Shuen, Jiko, Jenyo, Saiko, Dosho, Kyo, Kosho, and Kambin to challenge priest, uh, priest Saicho, Grandmaster Dengyo, in debate. Marveling at Grandmaster Dengyo's first word, without even listening to his second and third words, they all surrendered to him at once, bowing their heads and holding their hands together, such as at um, such sign on doctrines as the two storehouses, three periods and three periods or preachings by Shakyamuni Buddha, the Hoso doctrines of the three period teachings and five mutually distinctive natures of sentient beings and Kigon doctrines of the four teachings, five teachings, basic and unessential teachings and six forms and 10 mysteries of all phenomena were refuted from their foundations as if the ridge beam of a large house was broken. The banner of pride of those schools, ego, ten high priests, was pulled down in one large debate, large by meaning of witnessed by so many people, as well as the elite and the governments, uh, the entities, right, controlling entities. He just decimated all the other schools with ease. Because he just went by the words of Shakyamuni. Look here. What are you talking about? Right? In every case of this scholarship, just like Nietzsche, Nietzsche is constantly saying, look, it ain't me. It says so, right? This is what Shakyamuni said right here. Read it. I'm just calling your attention to it because obviously you missed it. That's Nietzsche. And a lot of people get pissed off by that, right? So here we are, we're talking about Dengyo doing the same thing. Greatly surprised, the emperor, on the 29th day of the same month, sent his emissaries, Wakeno Hiroyo and Otomo no Kunimichi, to the seven great temples and six schools of Nara, demanding their answers again. Each of them presented a letter of submission, stating, quote, Having read in our hearts the exquisite commentaries to the Lotus Sutra by Grandmaster Tendai, we believe that they summarize Shakyamuni's teaching pre preached in his lifetime, clearly explaining its meanings, revealing the one vehicle way of the Lotus Sutra. What he preaches in them is a profound and wonderful truth incomparable to the doctrine of any other school. Students of the seven great temples and six schools of Nara have never heard or seen such commentaries before. Then what were you reading? <laughs> 
The long feud between the San Juan and Hoso schools dissolved as quickly as ice melting away, clearing up all just like the rays of, a, of the sun, moon, and stars shining out after clouds and fogs have dissipated. Many sutras, it goes on. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Many sutras and commentaries have been preached during the 200 years since the dissemination of Buddhism by Prince Shotoku, and discussions about the comparative superiority of the doctrines have been endless. Yet, this most superb Tendai sect has not spread. Is it because people do not have the intelligence and the conviction in Buddhism to be able to listen to the perfect teaching? We respectfully believe that Emperor Kamu, who had been entrusted by the Buddha far in the distant past to spread the Lotus Sutra, saw the time for uh, saw the time was ripe for it. So the Emperor initiated the establishment of the one vehicle teaching of the Lotus Sutra, enabling students of the six schools at Nara to see the ultimate teaching of the Buddha for the first time. From now on, we should say all the people in this world would be able to reach the shore of enlightenment quickly aboard the vessel of the Lotus Sutra. Today, we, Zengi and others, are fortunate to be in this auspicious area, era and hear the enlightening words in these commentaries to the Lotus Sutra. Our karma from the past lives has been us this fortune, has given us this fortune. Without it, how could we be born? in this auspicious era. And so the questioner continues. Chia Xiang, Chia Xiang and others in China, over 100 in number, determined Grandmaster Tendai to be a sage. Today in Japan, 200 monks in those seven great temples of Nara also called Grandmaster Dengyo a sage. In the 2000 years after the death of Buddha, only two sages were seen in China and Japan. Moreover, Grandmaster Dengyo established on Mount Hiei, the great perfect and sudden precept uh, dais, which even Grandmaster Tendai had not propagated. Does this not mean that the Lotus Sutra was propagated toward the end of the Age of Semblance Dharma? Well, now we're going to argue about when the right time is for propagating the Lotus. So, a very large, very well-worded argument now let's see how Nietzsche responds. Answer. As I said above, Ashvagosha, Nagarjuna, Deva, Vasubandhu, and others propagated the great Dharma, which su such masters as Kashyapa and Ananda had not. I also mentioned before that what had not been propagated by such masters as Nagarjuna and Vasubandhu was spread by great master, grandmaster Tendai. It is also clear that Grandmaster Dengyo established the great perfect and sudden precept dais, which Grandmaster Tendai had not. What I am not sure of, however, is the greatest and most profound secret dharma clearly seen in the face of the Lotus Sutra. I wonder very much whether or not this profound true dharma, which the Buddha had preached exhaustively for those in the latter day or age, but had not been spread by such masters as Kashyapa, Ananda, Ashvagosha, Nagarjuna, Asanga, Vasubandhu, Tendai, and Dengyo during the 2000 year ages of the true Dharma and the semblance Dharma would spread all over the world as predicted by the Buddha now at the beginning of the latter age during the fifth 500 year period after the death of Shakyamuni Buddha. Interesting. Nichiren lets you in a little bit and says, Sometimes my confidence wanes. I see that it's the right time, according to what Shakyamuni Buddha predicted. His words indicate that there is a person who is going to embody the traits of Bodhisattva superior conduct or practices, however you translate it who's going to come out of the woodwork and propagate this teaching finally in this latter age amongst all kinds of corruption and misalignments and misunderstandings. He, he, there will be this person, this personage, who will take it as a personal mission, mission to write the records 
correct the corruptions and simply bring about the correct practice of this one vehicle. And Nietzsche sure seems like he's positioned to be that person. But that's quite a statement to make of yourself. Yeah? So he's still, hmm. We have to consider when this was written, right? So now it's going to continue in the next section, the most profound and secret dharma and fallacies of the Nembutsu, the Zen, and the Shingon sects of Buddhism. Where are they corrupt? Where are they going wrong? Let me show you from the words of the sutras themselves. So before we dive into that, and I suspect we'll be coming back to Nichiren's place in all of this, we're going to take a break. We went through a lot in that video, as we have been lately. And this will be the intro to the next one. In the meantime, since we covered a whole lot, you've got plenty to take to Gohonzon, take to your, your Buddha, your internal manifestation of Buddha, and make sure that this is clear in your mind. Make sure that this makes sense, that it demonstrates once again the singular position of the Lotus Sutra, the self-practice doctrine. Namo myo renge kyo. If you, if you got anything out of this, please like this video. Not for me, but for the algorithms in, in YouTube that help us push this information out further to people who may be seeking, but don't know where to find yet. Like, subscribe, subscribing helps so much. We're not monetized right now, by the way. This isn't a profit-making venture for me. I need money. The school needs money. The Sangha needs money. There are those of you, patrons on Patreon, people just uh, donating through uh, the um, PayPal link, paypal.me slash Sylvain. Uh, amazing. Your donations are so critical to keeping stuff paid here so it can continue to roll. But subscribing, sharing this with friends and growing our Sangha here on YouTube has an also very powerful exponential tool for propagation. It's actually your bodhisattva work. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you how much I appreciate what you can do and what you do. Thank you. Thank you so much for participating. Don't forget, I also have, I forgot to mention um, in the other video, the, the, um, the new member video or the new subscriber video. I never know how to, the rhetoric, right? But uh, the audio podcast, you can download them, own them, put them on a disc, keep them, refer to them anytime you need. It's a handy tool. And it's basically, it's just the audio portion of all these videos. So it's already made. Might as well offer it in a different form if it can be helpful, even as a tool to give somebody else, right? Thank you so much. Please take care of your health. Be kind to yourself. And I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye for now. <laughs>